many people. So today we are making uh, Jamaican beef patties. But of course we're not going to be using beef today. So we are going to be veganizing this and actually alkaline it. And everything I use will be on the new, well, yeah, everything I use will be on the nutritional list. So to start out, we have to make our dough first. So in this uh, bowl here, I have two cups of brown spelt. I have two cups of brown spelt flour, and I also have a teaspoon of sea salt, sea salt powder. Should I say? And here I have a half a teaspoon of agave crystals. And to give it that yellow color like you usually see in Jamaican beef patties, they usually use turmeric. But we are going to use a uh, natto powder or chote as some people like to call. And this is about a tablespoon just to give it some color. You have to kind of be weary with that because if you're just looking for the yellow color, you probably don't want to use as much. You probably want to mix it with your water so it'd be easy. But I'm not doing that today. So I'm just going to mix this around here. Get our chote all mixed in there so it won't be spotty all around your dough. but you only need about a half a cup. I put it in the freezer to let it get cold so that way it doesn't just melt into the flour. It'll kind of act as though it's butter. When you're putting it in, it's not going to crumble up like butter, but it'll kind of act like butter. So I'm going to try to do just a half a cup of this. A little bit at a time. A little bit at a time. And just add it slowly. Take your time. crumbled not like butter but you do have a crumbly texture and that's what you're looking for so you might not use the whole half a cup just eyeball it what you see there all right so now we're going to add our water and I also have my water it's cold too I had it in the refrigerator I have about two cups but you only need about a cup I tend to put more in the refrigerator just in case I need more. So we're just going to add about a cup of this. Again, a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time. You may not need the whole cup. And that is a good texture right there. That's what you want. You want to be able to make it into a dough ball. All right. Okay, so we're back and we're now ready to make the filling for our Jamaican beef patties. So I have a skillet here with some grapeseed oil already. And we are going to add three tablespoons of my alkaline mark, <laughs> my alkaline mock garlic to it. Flavor our oil here. Okay, so now I have here about. 20 ounces, a cup and a half, maybe. I know it looks like a lot 
of the baby bella mushrooms. I just uh, blitz them up in my food processor to make them little thin pieces, kind of like um, beef. So we're just going to cook these down, get some of the moisture out of them, and they will have a uh, beefy-like texture. Okay, so our mushrooms have sweated down here just about. Most of the water is gone. So now I'm going to add my other vegetables here so they can soften up. And what I have here, I have uh, half of a red bell pepper ch chopped up. <laughs> half of a red bell pepper chopped up. Mm. And I got a small purple onion. You can use whatever onion you want. This is just what I have an abundance of, so I'm going to add it. And we're going to let these cook down so they're nice and soft. Let the flavors marinate here. I know I forgot to say about the measurements and the ingredients, so let's just put that right there so you guys can see that. No problem. Now on this list, you're probably going to see a lot of things that you don't even have in your household yet. So, I do have a lot of alkaline and uh, mixed uh, seasonings that I have already mixed up myself, but just in case you don't have them at home, now you are in luck. Because guess what? Now we have our own line of alkaline seasonings. You can go to our website, which is... Uh, stayhappy.com www.stayhappy.com and we have a whole line of alkaline seasonings so a lot of these that you see that are already alkaline seasonings that are mixed go to our website you can buy them there so it'll be easy you don't have to bring out all these ingredients and mix them together every time you want to cook something I also have now on my website for the uh, alkaline soy sauce so you can pick those up and you won't have to worry about making them in advance they can sit in your pantry basically just there except for the soy sauce I would recommend putting the soy sauce in the refrigerator because it is alkaline and it is alive you will not be able to keep this soy sauce for years or months on end like you usually do with your regular soy sauce but because this is a live electric ingredient the expiration is going to be about three months. You want to keep it in the refrigerator as long as possible. Do not leave it sitting out on your uh, in your pantry or in your cabinet like you would do your regular soy sauce. All right, so now let's just check on this here. All right, we're going to give them a few more minutes to cook down, let my bell pepper get a little more softer than what it is. And back to what I was saying about my line of alkaline products. So, you will, like I say, with the soy sauce, need to refrigerate it all. So, I'm um, coming out of, with a wish of shire sauce. So, I'm trying to make this very easy for us. Like a lot in the stores, there is a lot of product that you can just go and buy already mixed together, like your chili seasoning and all-purpose seasoning and curry powders and all that but alkaline we do not have that so I'm trying to make that available for us so it'll be much easier for us too so we don't have to always have all these ingredients out before we actually start cooking things you'll actually be able to have them sitting in your pantry and you know they're 100% alkaline all my products are organic I research for organic I research for the regular product if they do not have organic or I cannot uh, research and find out that it really is organic, then I try to use my own product to sell, like the uh, tomato powder. The tomato powder I make myself because most tomato powders sold online or in stores are using like the beefsteak or your regular tomato. So I have to make the alkaline version, which is my grape tomatoes, cherry tomatoes, plum tomatoes, whichever you want to call them, but those. Same thing with the mushroom broth and the mushroom 
powder. Most mushroom things that have mushroom powder or mushroom broth in it, they use shiitake because shiitake is like the widely uh, raised one in China and it's much cheaper than most of them. So I personally have to make my own mushroom broth and I have to make my own mushroom powders. So to make to ensure that it is alkaline, using portobellas and baby bellas and amigo mushrooms and things like that. I will also have the mushroom powder and the mushroom broth online, just not quite yet. I am still kind of perfecting my mushroom broth because I want it to be flavorful for you guys. So again, like I say, go to the website, check out the uh, array of uh, seasonings. If the seasoning right now is not on there, don't fret. Jazz. Make sure you subscribe, go to our Facebook page, which is Mr. Stay Happy, and become a member so that way you can see when we drop the next alkaline seasoning or sauce, and you can be one of the first to get it. So now, if you like the fact that you now have available to you alkaline seasonings and sauces without having to make them up on your own in the beginning, please give this video a thumbs up because I need all the help I can get here with the thumbs ups and YouTube so they can kind of see and subscribe. Make sure you guys are in the loop. Hit the notification bell so you can see the next recipe as I use these products. So, I think now my bell pepper or soft as I can get them or I would like them without burning them. Make sure you get all that off the bottom of your pan. So now I'm going to add in some green onions. This is about three of the green onions or scallions or whatever you want to call them. And we're going to add that now. And I'm going to add a little parsley. The only reason I'm adding this parsley is because I have an abundance of them in my refrigerator. That's kind of why I added the uh, bell peppers to it. Because I have an abundance and I need to use them up. So usually when I have an abundance of something, I start using it in other recipes. So it doesn't always come out exactly the same. But we're going to add a little parsley in there. Give it a little bite. Add some color. And now at this point, we're going to start adding our seasonings. And right here in this bowl, I have some sea salt, ginger powder, some onion powder, some alkaline black pepper, some savory, and some thyme. We're going to add our garlic. You will be also be able to pick this up at, on our website. And I'm just going to do a heaping tablespoon here to start out. I also have alkaline beef bouillon. This also will be on the website too. And we're going to do a heaping tablespoon of it too. And now I have my all-purpose seasoning. And I'm only going to do about a half of a tablespoon of it and the yellow curry powder on the website I do have uh, red and yellow curry powder the red one is much more spicier and the yellow is mild so of course I'm using the yellow one and I'm actually going to do a full teaspoon of it want a lot of seasoning in these Jamaican jerk patties Jamaican <laughs> meat patties if you've ever had a Jamaican meat patty, you know it is very flavorful, so we're definitely going to add that in there. Get that mixed very well.
I'm going to turn my fire down here. Make sure you get all that good old flavor off the bottom there. And to this, I have about three tablespoons of my alkaline soy sauce, so we're going to add that, more flavor. You can add as much as you like, you know, as I always say, until your soul say yes. So right now I'm just going to start with about three tablespoons. I might add just one more tablespoon of it. This smells so good right now. Just so good. Like I can literally put this in a bowl and eat it by itself like this. At this point you want to taste it. Just in case you need to put a little more seasoning in there. Oh yeah, that is really seasoned right there. Mm -hmm. Strawberry mousse. So I'm about to eat one. I'll show eyeballing it. I don't know. I ain't gonna lie I for you. About it last I was night. eyeballing this sleep. shit out of it. Like, I that shit is sleep. good. I'm gonna fuck your shit up. I fell asleep last night. That's why I came down and made those cookies last night. Because I was like, I'm gonna fuck this strawberry mousse up. <laughs> now I'm gonna dip my cookies in it. <laughs> nah, I'm just mad. I'm gonna say strawberry mousse and chocolate chip cookies. Mm-hmm. Alright, let me get my eyes up here real quick. Man upstairs. That look good. What's that? Jamaican beef patty. Alkaline style. Alright, so our meat mixture is just about done here. As you can say, your mushrooms. As you can see, the mushrooms have cooked down very well. Our vegetables are cooked in there with it. So two, make sure that this sticks together. Mm. Alright, so to make sure it really sticks together and not fall apart when you bite into it and your mushrooms just dribble down your shirt, that's not pretty. We are going to add three teaspoons of aquafaba to help as a binder. And now we're just going to add a little bit of flour. Again, this is to your liking. Uh, usually a couple of teaspoons works fine. Just to make sure it binds together. And make sure you get that all mixed in there because you don't want to bite into just flour. Now to this, you can also add a scotch bonnet pepper, a habanero, a habanero or, a, or some cayenne because a lot of times Jamaican beef patties are spicy, but y'all know I don't really do spice that much and usually I would add a little cayenne at least, but because I have a gallon of cayenne and ginger and key lime water that I'm drinking, I'm getting enough cayenne today, so I'm not going to add it into the beef patties today. Alright, so our meat mixture is all done. I don't know if you guys can see it through that camera because I see a lot of steam coming off of this myself. Let's see. You guys see that? Looks like beef. Oh, come here. Don't waste nothing. So now I'm going to turn this off completely and set it to the side here. You want to let this cool before you put it in your dough, so let it cool off enough so you can handle it. Alright, so let me go get my dough so we can roll that out. I'll be right back. Alright, so our meat mixture has cooled off quite a bit for us to touch and things like that. And our dough has been sitting for 30 minutes, so now we're just going to cut this up in about 8 pieces here. And here we go. Just 
just going to take these and set these to the side. Ball this up. Get you a little flour. Cover your surface so it doesn't stick. Maybe not that much flour. Alright, there we go. Roll your dough. And now we're just going to roll this out to whatever thickness you want. It's you. Some people have thicker uh, pastry on the outside. Some people have a thinner pastry. So now let's just get this started. I am hard boy at rolling, so let's see how this works out. Now, uh, to make these, you can easily just put your uh, stuffing right here and just fold it over. But I happen to have a couple little tools to help me with that. So, I have like this empanada maker. I also have a smaller one. But if you don't have those, you can easily, like I said, just put your dough, fold it over, and shape it yourself. Or you could use a lid, a bowl, or anything like that. Like literally just put your lid on it and press it down so you can have your little circle but when you're rolling out your dough once if you're not sure how thick it is or how thick you want it or if you have enough dough just get your uh, whatever you're using and put it over and make sure it's far enough out and I'm using this one today for this one so you just press it down And there you go. You got your shape. Remove the rest. Let me get a knife so that'll be much easier. Just cut your shape out. Shoot. I'm messing up. Now, like I said, if you don't have a shaper, you could easily just spoon it in. I always make a line across, so therefore you don't go too far over, depending on how big you're making them. Well, depend on how much you have in there. But you want it not to be at least a half an inch or so from the outside, because that's where you're going to need to press the clothes at. Now, by hand, you would just fold it over. See if you guys can see this. Fold it, press it with your fingers right up to your filling so you don't have any air pockets in there. Then you can just take a fork and press it here. Alright, so then you would just take a fork, press your edges together. If you think your dough is too dry, you can easily uh, put a little water around before you seal it or some aquafaba and there you have it. Now I have a parchment lined baking sheet here and we're just going to lay those on there and move on to our next. All the dough that you pull off the sides you can easily just incorporate it again and voila you got a little small mini Jamaican meat patty. How cute is that? Alright, so I'm going to finish these up right quick and I'll be right back. But before I do, make sure you have your oven heated to 350 because you'll definitely need that in order to cook these in the oven. So let me finish these up. I'll be right back. Okay, so I have made up all of our meat patties here. They are all done. As you can see, I got 
few minis here. I got one medium and a couple large ones here. So what we're going to do, you just need to poke a couple of holes in the top so it can release that steam so it won't be watery in the inside. You won't have a lot of liquid. Alright, so now we're going to put this in the oven at 350. If you're doing the larger ones, it's anywhere from 20 to 25 minutes. If you're doing the minis, you got about 10 minutes on them. So in about 10 minutes, I'll go check the minis and take them out, and then I'll let the rest go for 25 minutes. So be back. All right, so we're back. It has been about 30 minutes. I let the larger ones go for about 30 minutes instead of 25 because I wanted that extra crispy crust on the edges there. That's just my preference. My preference, if you don't like it to be extra crispy, then you can take it out earlier. But just in case uh, it goes over to 25 minutes and you really don't know, you want to look for it to start having those little where it starts uh, flaking up right there. That's what you want to do. See that? The flaking there. That's what you want. You're looking for that. And your edges to be a little brown on them. I personally um, don't like them to be too hard. So again, I like for this to be soft but the edges to be crispy because I like that little flaking that falls off. I'm the person that be getting the flakes off the plate. So we're just going to now put these on a plate. Well, I'm going to I'll do one here just so you guys can see what it looks like on the inside. Ooh, it's hot though. All that steaminess. I don't know if you guys can see that very well. But it looks just like a Jamaican meat patty. I don't think people will really know the difference. And there we are. Your Jamaican vegan alkaline beef patties. Um, Happy should be home in a few minutes, like less than 30 minutes. So I'll let him do a taste test for this. But for now, I'm just going to plate them up and we'll just wait on him. So until he gets here, be back.